Hello everyone and welcome to tutorial 4 in our Max MSP Neural Network series. Now if you remember last time we ended up with uh, this actual neural network that can read the output of an XOR gate. Um, so we've got all of the individual hidden neurons there going into one output neuron with this output coming out there. But what we're going to do this time is come up with this instead where rather than have all of the neurons individually, we just have one object for each layer. Um, so we'll go through these as I did last time, just showing you the objects themselves. They'll be available to download as usual, and they're fairly simple to work out what's going on. So if we go into Output Layer, you can see here that I've turned the neuron, the output neuron, into a poly object. So what we're essentially doing is we've got a poly tilde object within a poly tilde object now. Um, so very little has actually changed here. I've basically just changed all of the inlets and outlets to in and out for poly tilde. Um, but the main thing that's changed is we now have, instead of the sigmoid uh, function, we now have this general activation function object here. Uh, now I'll just show you quickly here on Wikipedia of all things, never cite Wikipedia but in this case it's good, um, there's a number of different activation functions that you can have for a uh, artificial neuron. Uh, identity is where you don't change anything, it just stays exactly where it is, so x stays as x. Um, I've just used a few that seem to be the most commonly used. Uh, logistic is what we were calling sigmoid up until now, which is the one over all of that, um, which is known as logistic here, so that is there. Um, which will give us values of between 0 and 1, as we've been using up until now. Uh, we've also got TANH, which essentially is very similar, but instead gives values of between minus 1 and 1. Uh, there's soft sign, which is an alternative to TANH, which still gives values between minus 1 and 1, but with a slightly softer curve, which according to some researchers gives better results in certain situations, so I've included it here. And then we've got the rectified linear unit. Now all this does is, if x is uh, greater than or equal to 0, x stays the same. But if it's less than 0, the output of the neuron is 0. Um, and again, there's a school of thought that this um, almost supersedes the other activation functions and is actually far better for training uh, new artificial neurons than pretty much any other activation function. Uh, I've not looked enough into it to be able to say if that's the case, but uh, apparently um, sigmoid and all of that isn't really used for deep learning these days. Um, the only pro potential problem with rectified linear units apparently is that it can cause some neurons um, to, to, to die essentially so that they don't learn that their weights stop changing in any meaningful way um, and apparently uh, an alternative to that is this leaky rectified linear unit which keeps the um, keeps when x is greater than or equal to zero keeps x the same but when it is less than zero um, it outputs it but only one one hundredth of that of, of x below zero essentially if you see what I mean. So I've programmed an activation function object to be able to choose from each of these. Um, these are fairly obvious, I, don't, I won't go through how these are doing that, that's just following the mathematical equations here. Um, and then you've got a number that you can send into this gate through the second inlet uh, which will choose which one you're going to do. Uh, which from 0, or 1 rather, which is identity, all the way up to 6, which is leaky rectified linear unit. So that's our activation function object, and obviously I've made a new uh, inlet here, which goes directly into that. Um, I've named all of these, so you can check these if you want to double check what each of them are doing. Uh, but with the output layer object, the first argument will specify how many uh, voices for this poly tilde there are, which means how many neurons we're actually going to have um, in this layer. The second argument will be going into the number of voices inside the poly tilde, which means how many inputs each of those neurons is going to have. 
and then the third argument will be selecting the activation function for each of those uh, neurons. Um, you can't do different activation functions for each neuron unless you build a separate layer, essentially. So here you can see we've got output layer 1, 8, 2, which means we've got one output neuron with eight inputs with an activation function of 2, which is, if you remember, um, a sigmoid or logistic function. And then with hidden layer, it's a very similar story. I've changed the hidden neuron, um, added um, all the ins and outs instead of inlets and outlets. Um, activation function, exactly the same there. I don't think anything else has changed. Um, and then with the hidden layer um, itself, we've done it slightly differently because when we um, adjust the weights, obviously if you remember though the weight adjustments in any hidden layer um, relies on the weighted error that's coming out of the layer in front of it. So obviously we have to account for that. So with the hidden layer we have a fourth argument. The first three are exactly the same as the output layer, but the fourth argument will specify how many neurons are in the next layer. Because then what that does is it allows us to, um, there we go, so it says number of weighted errors from next layer in, which will be the last inlet here, and that will then group up each of those um, number of errors coming in so that we know um, how many need to go into which poly, and it will, it, you can have a look at all of this and work out exactly how it's doing what it's doing, but uh, this works essentially. The reason I've got so many bangs in this and in the output layer is I was finding that unless I specified target zero before each individual one of these, so target zero, voices to target zero, target zero, etc., um, it didn't target all of them. Now I thought that once you specified target zero, any messages after that would target all of them, but apparently I was wrong, uh, but this seems to get the job done. So if we go out of here, we've got the same training data for our XOR gate. Turn training mode on, reset all of the weights, and I changed it so it's only 20,000 training iterations because I found that that actually got a pretty good approximation um, rather than doing the 60,000, and obviously doesn't take nearly as long. So that's, uh, that's training now, so that should only take about 10 or 15 seconds which isn't too bad at all. Uh, now this is actually going to be the last um, tutorial that I do on neural networks um, for the time being. I've been trying to do at least one of them a week uh, just to get everything, you know, go through everything as I've been learning it, keep you guys up to speed, but as it stands now the main issue with doing the neural networks in Macs as we've seen is purely the training time, the actual computational um, power and the time needed to go through many hundreds of thousands of iterations with a very complex neural network. Um, so I'm going to be looking into ways around that, uh, potentially looking at redoing a lot of this patching within Gen or possibly in JavaScript or maybe just outsourcing all of the training um, to a Python code. I'm going to have a look into Python and have a go at learning that. Uh, but I still think that um, doing this and linking it sort of intrinsically with Max is going to be very interesting, particularly for if we uh, want to then uh, train a network um, in certain musical genres and then compose new material within those genres in the future. I still think that Max is going to be absolutely brilliant for that. Um, so let's just check that this has worked. So if we send in 110, you'll notice I'm not sending these into the ZL Echoes, I'm just able to now send them straight into the second inlet of the hidden layer uh, without having to tack on um, an additional number at the end to be fed into the Echoes. So if we do uh, 110, it should be an output of 0, yep. And this 01 should be an output of 1, yep. And same with this one, and same with this zero. Perfect. So you can see there that that works very well as it is. Uh, if you guys can find um, sort of low-level uses for um, a neural network like this, brilliant. It's all here for you. Um, go to my website and download it. Um, I'm going to try and carry on doing 
other Max tutorials. I know I know a few people who would really benefit from some very uh, basic sort of getting started with Max. Um, lots of stuff to do with the principles and flow of information, and then some more specific things like poly tilde, or maybe going a little bit into uh, the um, PFFT object, which deals with a Fourier fast transform, uh, which is really interesting, and you can do a lot of cool stuff with that. Um, but uh, we'll get to that when we get to it. So for now, thank you very much again, everyone, for all of your feedback and support throughout doing all of this. And when I do come back to it, I will look forward to seeing you there. So thank you and see you soon.